Many factors can change our cholesterol levels as we get older. However, cholesterol is not supposed to fluctuate. So, what if you discover that yours does and what can you do about it? Join me now as I discuss that and more with Dr. Carol Watson and fellow health advocate, Elise Green. Well, it may go up and down like a roller coaster, but it really does matter if your cholesterol fluctuates. While you can't see or feel high cholesterol, it can potentially lead to many problems, including heart disease and stroke. Here to share what you really need to know about keeping your high cholesterol in check are cardiologist Dr. Carol Watson from the UCLA School of Medicine, along with heart attack survivor and health advocate Elise Green. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks so much for having us. Now, first, doctor, give us a little more insight on high cholesterol. What does it mean to have it, and why does it tend to fluctuate so much? So cholesterol is a normal part of our bodies, this waxy, fatty substance that's carried in all of our bloodstreams. Our bodies use it to make all of our hormones, like estrogen or testosterone, also to maintain all of our cells, to make our skin look plump. There's a lot of good things that cholesterol does. But all of those things only require a very low level of cholesterol. In our society, our levels are much higher than the amount needed to just perform those basic functions. And anytime you get elevated cholesterol above our basic needs, that elevated cholesterol can start to deposit places we don't want it, such as our arteries. If you get cholesterol clogging the arteries that supply blood to the heart, that causes a heart attack. If you get cholesterol blocking the arteries that supply blood to the brain, that causes a stroke. So we physicians are very focused on cholesterol, maintaining normal, healthy levels. We recommend everyone do that with diet and exercise, but many people will need something on top of that. And the most common medication that we give is a statin. Statins are phenomenal cholesterol-lowering drugs. They also reduce the risk for heart attack, stroke, and even dying of a cardiovascular disease. So they're very important. But unfortunately, there's data that shows that within a year after being prescribed a statin, about 50% of people have stopped their statin. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Now, you did mention some things that people can do um, to keep their cholesterol under control and maintain that healthy lifestyle to avoid high cholesterol. Um, And then you also mentioned the medications. Now, you gave us those statistics. Um, Have you found there to be a common reason why patients stop taking the statin drugs? Yeah, so it's a different reason for every different patient, it seems. But what we know is that a lot of people don't, uh, don't really appreciate the direct relationship between high cholesterol, heart attack, and stroke. And by lowering cholesterol, you lower risk for heart attack and stroke. I think if people understood that direct connection better, they wouldn't stop their statin. But another thing is some people get symptoms that they feel are related to the statin. And they may think that, well, I don't need this and I'm getting symptoms, so I just stop it. And I don't even tell my, my doctor. Unfortunately, again, that puts you at great risk. And there are many different statins out there. There are seven on the market in the United States. So if you can't tolerate one statin, I'm sure your doctor can find a different statin that you can tolerate better. So definitely speak to your doctor. Don't just stop your statin. Talk to your doctor. Great advice there. Now, doctor, I know that you're involved in this Take Cholesterol to Heart initiative. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yes. So this is a great initiative, Take Cholesterol to Heart. It's got a website, takecholesteroltoheart.com, where you can get many resources that do exactly what I just described. Really talk about the, the risks of having high cholesterol, the benefits of lowering that cholesterol, the benefits of medications such as statins, and ways to think about how to talk to your doctor about your statin therapy. If you're having any symptoms that you're worried may be causing be caused by your statin, questions that you can ask your doctor. Again, as I mentioned, there are multiple statins on the market. If you're not tolerating one statin, I'm certain your doctor can find one that you can tolerate. Sounds like it's full of information there, and thank you for sharing that. Now, Lisa, I understand that you had a life-changing heart attack yourself. Um, Tell us a little more about what happened to you and what you want people to personally know about taking care of their own heart health. 
So I was 35 years old and seven months pregnant with twins when I had a massive heart attack. Uh, fortunately, I had great care right away, so I'm doing well. My daughters are 17 years old and doing well. But what that means for my heart health is that since I've already had a heart attack, I am at significant risk of having another one. So it's important for me to manage all of my risk factors. I pay attention to my blood pressure and my stress and my cholesterol level so that I can prevent that second heart attack. I'm also dedicated to making sure that other people are doing the exact same thing which is why I'm so delighted to have partnered with Coa Pharmaceuticals America on this education campaign, Take Cholesterol to Heart. In visiting takecholesteroltoheart.com, there's all kinds of wonderful resources there, the, the guide to really have that conversation with your doctor. In the 17 years since my heart attack, the thing that I think is by far the reason that I've had such a good recovery is my relationship with my doctor. When we participate in our own health care, that's when we get the best treatment. Absolutely. Now, um, both Lisa and Dr. Watson, can you tell us um, just some things that you would like to give to um, those who are listening and watching this, some tips about just living with high cholesterol on a day-to-day -day basis? What are some things that people can do to kind of manage that in addition to the medication and having that close relationship with their doctor? Mm -hmm. So the first thing is to know your cholesterol level. Everyone has to make sure that they are getting their cholesterol checked regularly. And just because it was fine one year doesn't mean it's going to be fine the next year. Every year we're getting older, then some years we go through menopause, and do, or some years we gain weight. There are things that make our cholesterol levels change frequently, just as you mentioned at the beginning. So the first thing is know your cholesterol level. The second thing is maintain adequate, prudent diet. The thing that raises our cholesterol the most are saturated fats and trans fats. Saturated fats are found mostly in meats, pot roast, pastrami, things like that. We know those all raise cholesterol. We know that trans fats, things found in baked goods, cookies, cakes, those also raise our cholesterol. So make sure you lower those levels as much as possible to maintain adequate cholesterol levels. Exercise, maintain optimal weight, watch all your other risk factors as well. And for me, the thing that I know for sure is we very rarely do things because of the information we receive. We do things because we want to. And when, look, Dr. Watson says that there's a direct connection between high cholesterol and heart attack and stroke, there's also a direct line between preventing those heart attacks and strokes and getting to spend all the moments possible with the people that you love. My girls are getting ready. Next year they'll graduate from high school. I wanna be there. I need to do the work to make sure that I'm controlling all of my risk factors. We all need to do that so that we get all the moments we wanna to have to. Absolutely, and thank you for sharing those amazing tips and advice with us today. And again, for more information on high cholesterol and even having the connection with your doctor and living with high cholesterol, visit TakeCholesterolToHeart.com. Thank you so much again for joining me today. It's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for having us. Have a wonderful day. You, you too. too.